Hello, hello, mic test. Okay. So here we go, guys. Today is Friday fight day. Um, as normal, we look at either uh, one fighter or one kind of fighter a week and kind of break down what he does to give you guys some of the inside scoops or some of the advanced moves or strategies that may be going on. Um, today, we're looking specifically at Timu Jin from Mongolia. He uh, is personally one of my favorite fighters to watch. He's shorter than most people in his division, but he makes up for it for, by being very strong, both uh, like pushing and just physically and second by uh, stamina. Um, I was actually uh, requested to review this fight that's on screen now, but after the second round, things don't go very well for Malaysia just because he's not physically able to handle Timu Jin's um, offense, especially in the clinch. Um, and in the last fight we'll go into today, we won't we won't go fully into all of them. I'll show you some cool cool stuff he does, and then in the last one we're actually gonna break it down when he's against Russia, uh, and how Russia is able to kind of stave him off a little bit. But there are both uh, there are good things from both sides. So this one's gonna go into a lot of if you're a smaller fighter, how I one of the strategies you can utilize for yourself, and um, kind of different kind of moves you can use and tactics you can use while inside the clinch. Uh, most famously, this guy is actually famous for inventing this kick right here uh, from inside the clinch. I don't know about inventing, but he was the first one to actually use his international competition. Uh, he's been pushing, break, he's down. Oh. The outside, the way outside from from behind the back. Crescent kick here. Oh. And it's hard to block because it's coming straight at you this way. And no one in Taekwondo, especially when they're doing a crescent kick, no one really blocks like a like a high block, right? And that may not even have enough power behind it to actually block it. Um, and he actually, it's all up, all up tape roll. He's going to get a standing eight count. Most people block crescent kicks or outing kicks with the hand to the side but this one just comes straight down the middle almost like an axe kick uh, and so it's it's hard to block unless you're blocking MMA style which is uh, which I'm a proponent of uh, he gets hit with it a second time uh, and then the rest of this match uh, his fighting style has always been high pressure high high pressure close shove push push get points inside the clinch and they can do that because Mongolia's stamina has been outstanding since forever as you can see, as the fight progresses, it's uh, he just secures more and more of a lead. Good. Um, I want you guys to start noticing this too. He does this a lot as a smaller fighter. This is something you need to do because you can't go into a, a taller guy's distance without jamming up the front leg. So here, he has this leg up first on his way in, and that's not to score. It's not to do. Uh, and not to get any points. Its only purpose is to make sure that front leg doesn't come up to greet him in the face. Good, and he's able to get inside. There's a punch, the follow-up kicks. Uh, my only mistake I think sometimes I see with uh, with him, which caught him almost, I think, against Russia too, was his uh, stepping back out of the clinch. We had a Korean coach who came through the Philippines, and he, uh, he would literally hit us with a stick if we ever did that when we fought. Um, and that's kind of where Ma Malaysia is able to make up his points. That happens quite often on the way out here. Uh, like I said, watch this thing in. Clash. Good follow-up. From there, instead of backing out, you should be going in to close the distance so Blue can't uh, get their points back. And once again, he's in their face. Uh, Malaysia does have some pretty cool rallies back toward him. I think one of these is about to happen right here. If I remember this right. Yeah. So Malaysia does have some pretty good counterattacks, but for the most part, it's a lot of uh, a lot of getting pushed back by Red, and he's unable, he's really unable to stand physically strong against uh, Timu Jin from Mongolia. It is hard to do that because the guy's smaller, uh, but overall, that's that's kind of how the rest of the fight turns out. Uh, key points to take away: when you're a smaller fighter, watch how he lifts his front leg to counter whatever front leg's in front, follows up with a punch. You can do that, you cannot do that, up to you. And then follow up with a back leg kick. Uh, second one we're going to look look at was, uh, I found this one interesting because I, I, I YouTube searched Mongolia here and some of these fights came up. I know there's one against him in Abu Ghosh, uh, but I mean, in the general uh, bell curve of fighters, not many people fight like Abu Ghosh. So I didn't think that would bring much value to 
bring to uh, to show you guys because it's like, well, if you fight like Abu Gosh, you can beat Mongolia. But I mean, how many people are really fighting out there like Abu Gosh or as dynamic as he is? So I think it'd be better to give you guys more of a straightforward strategy, which is why I picked um, his fight against Russia here at the end. But what I want you guys to watch here is uh, takeaway from this is Temujin knows that he is smaller, um, so his pushing game should be stronger. And also that um, he doesn't mind giving up some points in the early round because he knows he's going to tire the person out at the very end. Like he's betting his stamina will outlast his opponent's stamina. And uh, the same happens, the same is kind of with uh, with Dehun. Um, he, he's very high pressure, much like Mongoli. He, he approaches it differently because um, obviously they're, they're different fighters and uh, they have different weapon sets. But overall... Dehun is not worried about being down a little bit in the first two rounds because he knows he's betting that in the third round the stamina will give and that's what happens in this fight here. I'll I'll show you some guys show you guys some highlights. Um, what I want you to take away is how physical Mongolia here is being against uh, Ireland. Dude. Well, that was kind of a high punch. I was supposed to be after that. I mean. Usually the first round I notice Mongolia doesn't normally, well, when he doesn't normally punch people in the face, but he doesn't normally pressure as much until he knows kind of what weapons they're sitting on. Uh, technical problem. I, I'm pretty sure it wasn't intentional, uh, but it is a combat sport with rules. Sometimes stuff like this happens. Same thing as before. The, uh, uh Gumjung. Here. What exactly what I was saying before? The leg he's throwing up right now isn't to, um, isn't to get points. It's just to make sure this leg of the opponent doesn't come up around. Uh, later, what I'm not sure if they're gonna do it in this fight, but what some people try and do when he does that, he tries to counter underneath, and then what he does is he just uses his front leg to, um, to go to your head. Uh, and so, as a smaller fighter, that's something you could do is when, when you close against a taller fighter, have your leg raised, close hard, be ready to punch after. Good, and he's very physical. Like I said, he really does not mind. Like, you can see how much he's brawling in this segment. He really does not mind giving up points. But you gotta think, you gotta ask yourself, like, how much of a physical brawl like this can you take as a taller fighter on the defense? Mongolia full well knows that he can last in three rounds. Like, I don't know about you guys or how your stamina feels, but if someone's fighting like that consistently, it's going to be pretty exhausting. And that's where Mongolia knows where to have this. You can see he's, he's physically strong because he's, he's shoving Ireland back. You see as the fight progresses. Um, something also, I tell people to high pressure a lot. Uh, this might be just because of the end of the round, but a lot of people just take that as you have to go on at every single kick. Uh, that's not the case. Like, he gives Ireland different looks and different distances, so Ireland is still unsure of where he's going. And he's trying to camouflage his attack as often as possible. And so, as, as a smaller fighter, that's something you must be doing also. Is you can't just go in every single time because you're too predictable. You have to sometimes give up space and make them guess about where you're going before you actually close the distance and work them much like normally is. So, third round, uh, full, he's down, but fully on the offense here. Uh, and, starting to give punches, which is good. Grabbing call, that's interesting. Both grabbing calls, but not the bad thing too much. But same thing, so, the reason now it's not, he's not going as deep is because, um, he knows Ireland's tired, so on these ones he's not he's not closing in for the punch. And so well, why is that? Because as you saw, Ireland slid back and tried to go ahead, so that negates kind of the headshot. And he knows that if Ireland's too tired to move, he can just flick that up to Ireland's head. So even so, overall game plan, overall game plan is to close the distance against a tall fighter, score on the inside. Secondly, what does a tall fighter do to counter that? Headshots. You try and get around headshots in multiple different ways. In this case, Ireland sliding back and going to the head. What's your response to that? Mongolia's response: kick kind of in place, try and weed that out, and mix that up into the camouflage of closing the distance and being physically stronger. 
There was, that's what I was talking about. When, when he gets too tired to move, he brings uh, Mongolia brings it up to the up to the head. Yeah, so tried for it, went for the body. He's not being as high pressure. Not sure if he himself is a little bit. Oh, no, it's because he's setting that up. That's why he's not being as high pressure. It's because he's setting up his this one. Boom from the outside. Oddly, that didn't score. Um, anyway, uh, Ireland's, I believe, Ireland's, yeah, Ireland starts getting really, really tired. He just straight fell down. It didn't, he didn't fall down because of force. He didn't fall down, like, like if he fell down because of force, he would have fallen backwards. It wasn't a strong kick. Ireland is just freaking exhausted from having to fight this guy. And, uh, Mongolia is still pressing. Force outside. When, you're, when your opponent's tired, the defenses go down, ring management goes down. That's like the most opportunity to have many points. I'm pretty sure I know how this ends because I know Mongolia lost to Abogosh. Yeah, and uh, he's still pressuring. He's trying to just end it as soon as possible. Okay, so physically stronger, he beats him. Um, and so as a tall player, you may be asking yourself, how do you beat this? Well, uh, we're going to show you in the next match. But as a small player, what I'm trying to bring home to you as a small player is you need to be physically strong. You need to know how to negate the front leg, much like um, Temujin's doing here. Uh, and you need to know how to capitalize when you're on the inside. Uh, he's... I would not say Temujin is the cleanest inside game fighter I've ever seen, but he does brawl and he does hit those openings and is able to capitalize. Uh, and so when you're sparring, that's stuff to think about. How do I get around the front leg? How do I close distance? When I'm in the clinch and you're sparring your partner or you're sparring your opponent and you're in the clinch, think about where is his hands not blocking. If it's high, obviously kick low. If it's low, kick high. If he's good at adjusting, you have to fake it with a like out in into a body kick or uh, Dehun's like inside kick that goes it's like an inside out but to the body um so you have to be able to capitalize when you're on the inside uh last point is as a smaller fighter you have to dictate oh in general you have to be the one dictating the pace of the match you can't you can't let the tall guy like zone you out in the corner and take away your your ability to move that's the worst case scenario for you oh he won because of gum jung um, and so we're going to see in the next match, we're going to really start breaking down. I'll go a little bit slower in the next match about um, in, when he fights Russia in the uh, Grand Slam and how Russia is able to get around this incredible offense, uh, offensive fighter. So next match, I have this really lowered down because of the announcer. Good. So going into here, we know physically stronger. Russia's front legs on all their fighters have been very much on point. That's the same for their heavyweight, for their featherweight. Um, everyone's been super on point. Get Temujin. That's what I'm... This another another point. If you don't think he doesn't actually use this, it's a one-time angle. It's not. <laughs> right here. He knows it's the front leg. Front leg to jam the front leg. No other job besides get your leg in the way. Follow up and punch. And he's he's doing his best to keep him. Wow, my internet got slow all of a sudden. But he's doing his best to keep Russia on the back end. Maybe force out. Try and get a gum jung. For some reason, that's like a blank spot. As you notice, he's been on. He's been in uh, red. Like Mongolia's been on the inside this whole time. Russia's been on the outside. Gum jung. Ring management is super important. Another? Well, that counted? Holy cow. Must have like barely tapped him. Okay. Obviously not good. Side note. Look at where Mongolia places his hands in the clinch. If you're a small guy, it is imperative you know how to manage in the clinch. Boom. Notice how he's shoving. His hands are underneath um, Russia, and he's shoving Russia up. So that way the center of gravity 
is um because if Russia has a base, it's harder to move him back. But if he's standing up and he push it upwards, it's much easier to knock something over if it if the center of gravity is moved from the from from a strong base. And that's what he's trying to do here and following up right afterwards. I see a lot of people sometimes just kind of shove. They they shove and they don't kick. Mongolia's doing an excellent job of both shoving and kicking. It's something you need to get used to. And Russia's doing the proper thing. Um, it's not, you don't counter this guy and you don't go offensively only on body shots. You need to throw the head shots. So he has to respect your range. And because if he does it, he's going to, you know, that's that stuff's going to happen. He's going to hit the head twice. You're going to have a five point, six point lead. Good try. Fighting more for ring position. Good. So I think we're going to see a lot of the same strategy going on in this first round. Is uh, Russia is going to try and trap for the head, short, or um, if he assumes Mongolia is not going to move back, then where he is. Mongolia's whole job, cancel the front leg, clinch, try and get your points on the inside. Let's kind of skip to round two because, oh, there's a, if you guys want a different angle on how to do the out in crescent kick from the inside. Good. One more time. I'm going to play slow-mo for anyone who wants to watch this and learn the technique. One, clash, good, punch, set, and it comes out this way. It's not up on the side. It's around the side this way. Oh, he barely missed it. How unfortunate. But yeah, so if you guys want to practice that at home, instead of shooting it straight this way, if this is your opponent's head, instead of going straight this way, it comes out this way and comes on top like that. So that way, if their hand is to the side, instead of your crescent kick coming up there here, it comes from the back. Boom, like that. Anyway, continuing forward. Gave him the punch, which is nice. Uh, Good. Russia is doing a good job getting set on the base. He's not letting Mongolia push him back here. Boom. Notice how far Russia is leaning just to maintain control in the clinch. He's not standing up straight. He's trying to. He's getting set in a good stance as much as he can. As soon as he feels like he's moving back, he widens his stance a little bit, begins pushing back on Mongolia. And something I was shown also is if this happens to you and you're a smaller fighter, how do you get around this? See how um, Russia is leading like this and you're like that? If you were to step out in a 90 degree, it's going to take Russia a half second or your opponent a half second to catch their, catch their balance. So this position, you're leaning, step out this way. Your opponent will have to catch their balance here. And if you step out this way and you kick right away, as they're catching their balance, you'll, you should be able to hit them. So if this is happening to you, you step out, they fall as they're falling. That's when you're, that's when you kick. So here, out, kick. Here, out, and then kick. Try and follow my hand motions. Step out at a 90. If that happens, then you want to try and score. There's, there's also a chance you might just be tired. You want to rest. You don't mind doing that. Good. Notice all of the kicks, too, as a small player. Mongolia is never trying to score from the outside here. He knows the first kick is to negate the defense, the second kick is to score. Every single time. Or at least most of the time. You can't do it every single time you're going to get countered. Uh, I'm tempted to fast forward because I feel like that's what's, what's going to be happening here. I think he's trying to set up his out in again because that almost hit him. Nice punch. Oh, no score for the punch. That's, just, that's unfortunate. Second round. See if there's anything here. Good. Something also, if you're um, so if you're a taller player, let's let's figure out how to beat this. If you're a taller player, your base must be strong, so you have to be physically strong there. You have to be ready to that after the clash. You'll notice Russia has a second kick ready every single time, uh, most of the time. Um, let's see if we can wait for another one. So uh, that wasn't that wasn't what I was about to talk about, but this is another option. After clash, here. 
if you skew it out from the clash, they have a harder time closing the distance. After the clash, if you had stayed there, Mongo that's Mongolia's distance. So if you're a taller player and you clash and you have the ring space, if you scoot out further, then when they close, that's more time you have to react to them closing. So instead of clashing and staying right here where he can follow up, clash and then practice um, almost like return stepping all the way back. And that'll give you more space in case they do decide to close. You have um, a half second more, a little bit more time on the reaction. So this is for a taller player. But the other option uh, Russia normally does, which I think tags Mongolia a couple times here, is after the clash, he's set for a second kick. One, yeah. Uh, Russia tries for the second kick, and he knows he can't. He knows the first kick will usually be negated, so he doesn't throw everything he can into that first defensive kick. He knows that's going to clash, and that's accepted, so he has to try and beat Mongolia on the follow up. Also, third thing as a tall person, getting your knee up and like even just trying for stuff like this. That, that blocks this whole side, the half side of your body, because your leg is there. That's a third option. First option, hit, get out of the way. As a tall fighter, hit, get out of the way. Second option, hit, get set, hit again. Third option, if you do get in the clinch, get your knee up and try and hit and keep your knee up. So that way it at least blocks one whole half of your body or a quarter of the scoring section. That third option I would not recommend as much. I'd rather have you with better footwork. Good and excellent. Right, I'm going to show you right here. Uh, smaller fighters, if you are having trouble pushing people back, don't push straight back. You want to shove up here. He's shoving the arms upward to displace the center of gravity so it's easier for the guy to fall forward. Or, I mean, excuse me, fall backwards. Good. And then if you're a tall fighter and this is happening to you, this is really good for clinch work. He pushes on the arms. He doesn't try and push back on the torso. He, he just straight removes the arms off of his body. I feel like I need to start drawing down some notes so at the end of the end of the tape I can recap it for you guys. Good. So, if you don't, you're not set on one of the three defenses, or one of the three options, which Russia was obviously not set for here. That's what happens. Oh, nice try. Russia's better there. Notice after the clash, Russia was set. Russia was set, negated the follow-up on Mongolia. You don't, as a tall fighter, when someone's closing the distance, you don't have the option to not kick. Unless you can close it up and lock up distance right away, you don't have that option. Because they're going to get into distance and they're just going to mess you up when they're at the distance. What happened here, actually? Is it Gumdunk for falling? Gumdunk for falling. Oh, there it is. There it is. Let's watch that one more time because I really like this kick. Follow up. Ooh, that was also very subtle. I want to play this back even slower. Notice if you notice what you see here. Do, 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 do. One, two, three. Ah no, okay. I thought I thought Mongolia did something way more tricky. Um, it just turns out that Russia is not ready for the speed of this kick. I thought Mongolia trapped his hand against his own hogu. Like I thought Russia, he trapped Russia's arm against his own hogu so he couldn't block the kick. Um, but it turned out he just uh, Mongolia is just too fast. And. Uh, so one of the other things too, I mean, obviously it's easier for me to say here than, than, uh, than do it, but if someone's, I'm, I'm trying to get a lot of people or most people in Taekwondo community to stop blocking head kicks like, like this, because there's so much space where the kicks can go around. I'm trying to get more people to block like this. I use this, um, a lot when I can actually see a kick, if I can. I can afford to do it. It blocks around the back of your head in case it wraps around. 
Um, I just feel like it covers more surface area than just like trying to throw your arm up, which is kind of the old style of blocking. Um, and like in a, in a situation like this, obviously he got hit. So like that would come straight down the middle. And that's why I'm trying to get more people to block MMA style like that. Cause it covers more of your helmet. That was also, well, I mean, more pushing up, you notice. More shoving Russia upwards, trying to displace the center of gravity, etc., etc. Russia down for the first time in the match. Nice. Oh, we're starting already. Okay. So I don't know if Mongolia is tired, but it's Russia is coming out, and it doesn't seem like it very much. But he's starting to dictate the pace of the match. Um, he's the one throwing the offense. Mongolia is the one reacting to it. I don't like that from Mongolia. I believe even if you're ahead, you should still be dictating the pace of the match, um, either through footwork or by threatening. It, Russia followed up after the clash, made sure that Mongolia's size negated. Good try. Wow. Body shot. Let's see how, see how I got in. How did... Underneath. Good. Wait, one more time. Okay, this is a good Pachagi underneath the, the cut. Mongolia not expecting that because... Mongolia wasn't expecting that because the whole time Russia's been fighting him on point defense. So, like, if he kicks, Russia engages right away. He kicks, Russia engages right away. This time, Russia slid back and hit, which is why that setup in that scenario worked. Yeah, and Russia's learning that you can't just clash and, like... Clash and accept that you guys clash. He's clashing and following up, which negates Mongolia's follow up. I think Mongolia's trying to find a way around it now. Trying to shoot one of the three options. The only one that my, one of the options that Mongolia hasn't really been doing is not really fighting. Uh, we covered this in uh, Russia versus the Norwegian. If it's if you fight him close stance, you have the opportunity to slide in and spin. I don't know if uh, spin kicks are really in Mongolia's repertoire, and so maybe that's why he's avoiding it, but that's another option in case the guy's strong front leg defenses in that situation. Especially as a smaller fighter, it's very good. One minute, one point, trying to figure out how to get it. Good try. Good try on that again. You notice Russia is not able to... Russia did not counter right away, which is why it gave... Um, Mongolia opportunity to score here. Clash, boom. Yeah, if you don't kick right away, it's uh, you leave yourself as open to be scored on. Nice try again. I think he's trying to set up the headshot. That's why he keeps going to the body. We'll see if he tries it a third time here. Or Mongolia is tired. There's also that option. Oh no, tried to change it up. Oh, how unfortunate. He, uh, in this third one, he was going to angle out, but the ref stopped it right away. That was, that's unfortunate. So much for the setup on that. Good. Good try adjusting there. I kind of thought Russia had a bigger play than just holding up the clock here. Almost hit it. Almost hit it. Almost. Oh, now he's, it's a little bit too late to spin, man. He should have been spinning a minute ago. Punch. Punch. Over the top. Yeah, if you started spinning... Um, so if you start... The reason I said a minute ago is because Russia knows now he's spinning. And so he can just easily lean back and casually counter the kicks a long way away. If... You can't do that if your opponent's cl closing on you hard, because if they close on you hard and on top of you as you're leaning back, you're not set to follow up on the defense like Mongolia was doing before. Um, and so now that he's spinning and he's showing his hand, he's only spinning. That's why the spin kicks don't work. You need your guy to be ready to clash. For a spin kick to work, or at least in my opinion, for one of these spin kicks to work, 
the clash has to be when your guy isn't about to move backwards. And if they are about to move backwards, it has to be highly offensive. Um, if you watch the Iran versus Abu Ghosh fight, um, Iran holds his ground as Abu Ghosh spins, which is why Abu Ghosh's traps work. In this situation, they're not working because Russia knows he's going to spin, so he's just moving back off of whenever the spin happens, and uh, Mongolia can't cover enough distance. Um, and that's game. So, to recap, guys, this is uh, watch Tambu Jin if you're a smaller fighter. Great, great strategies across, great tactics inside the clinch, both going to the head, going to the body, um, sliding in with that front leg to make sure that your opponent's front leg is negated, hitting with the punch afterwards uh, to try and get a point there. The out in crescent kick from outside is very extremely hard to block. I know because I've been hit with it before, not by Tempo Jin, but by my teammates in the Philippines. Um, and as a smaller fighter to get a front or on the front leg, you need to do the clash, clash punch, clash follow up to the body, clash double like Tempo Jin's doing, clash over the top, or um, as Abu Gosh did, if your opponent your taller opponent kind of stands there and meets you off the line a lot. You can um, trap spin, like not clash spin. You can clash spin, I guess, if you're close to answer and like, you want to try and meet it. But in general, you want to step spin or switch spin into the open side to hit the body. Uh, if you're a taller fighter, how do you counter that stuff? Uh, one is on your clash, be ready with a follow up because you know they have to close the distance in order for, you to, for them to score. Like, that's a given. So if you throw a counter kick in there, it's going to really throw a wrench in their offensive um, wheels. Uh, the second one is after you clinch, give distance away. And um, if you give distance away, then it's going to be it's gonna take them more time to uh, close the distance. So it gives you a little bit more time to react. Um, you can't, though, you need to do that when you have ring space. So you can't do that and, like, give up a gum jog. That's That's obviously not an option. Um, so that's why it's important to maintain your ring management and stay in the middle. Uh, thirdly, as a tall guy, um, if they're in their flurry of kicks, you got to throw something in there. Preferably, if you can get it off, a double. Um, and then after your double, use the momentum to try and lock it up because that'll occupy both spaces of where their legs can come up. If you can only throw one leg, I would recommend trying to throw your leg um, on the leg that they kick at. So if it's... If you're in open stance like this and you're in the clinch, if they like to kick this side, then throw your left in there just as a wrench so he can't lift his leg up as much. Because um, obviously if you throw your left leg and his is open, then he can go high. Uh, what else? Lastly, um, if you're a smaller guy and you're in the clinch, if you can't shove them straight back, shove up. And that'll remove their center of gravity and allow you to push them more easily. Because... Obviously, pushing something that's unstable is a lot easier than pushing someone who's stable. If you are a taller fighter, it's important for you, if you feel like you're getting pushed up, you need to drop your center of gravity below below there. So if they're pushing you up, um, I normally drop into a front stance, or like a deep front stance, lower my center of gravity, and then start pushing back right away. Uh, and that should negate what they're trying to do. And then just be ready after that to follow up. Overall, a lot to learn from this guy especially for smaller fighters. And then uh, we were able to pick Russia's brain a little bit for how he dealt with Temu Jin. Um, but that's it for today, guys. I know that's a lot of information. Uh, hopefully this is helpful to some of you guys out there. Please leave a like, a comment, or uh, subscribe below. I really appreciate those. And uh, let me know if there's anyone specifically you want me to cover or a fighting style you want me to cover. Open for all suggestions. Um, thank you guys and see you guys next week.